The central claims of Hegel's philosophy of art are constructed in his famously opaque terminology, primarily the idea of the spirit or the geist. And sometimes you'll hear it as zeitgeist, which is literally the spirit of the time. And, and, and the, the time, the temporal dimension, we'll come back to. There are a couple of ways we can understand this. The, the first way, which I would call the traditionalist or the conservative way, is to see the geist or the spirit as a kind of all-encompassing substance that determines reality. Now that substance, that substantial view, that traditional view of the geist as being, as being like a thing, um, would almost understand the geist as person-like. You could even say it comes very close to the idea of a god, in, especially in, the, in, in Western literature. Now, that's fine, except the idea of spirit as God is just not helpful for us as historians, mainly because uh, if, if God is controlling everything, there's just not much that, that we can do about it. Now, a different way of understanding Hegel's spirit is better for us, but it's also a little more difficult to summarize. The idea is still that everything real is with hindsight determined by organizing principles, organizing principles of a whole, of a totality. Think of it, it, it could be modeled as a structure. Uh, think of it, or it could be modeled as sort of conditions of possibility, that the whole of reality is organized by a structure that establishes the conditions of possibility. But this structure can only be known in hindsight. I mean, we can use it to make speculations and to make predictions about the future, but we can't systematically conceive of this structure until everything has already happened. So all of the connectivities, all of the butterfly effects, all of the chaos theories, all of the, 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 the ways we might model the way everything in the world is connected, uh, theoretically it would be possible to give that a structure, an organizing structure, but only after everything is already passed. Now, this, this idea, the, the, the idea of spirit is this organizing structure which is constantly being produced. It's never, it, it, it's, it's a structure that is never settled. It's a, it's a structure, it's, uh, the, the spirit on this model would be more of a process than a thing. It's not a substance, it's a process. Um, so, and then, and then that spirit, that organizing structure, learns about itself in stages. And it learns about itself through art. So think of it like this. The spirit initially um, sort, of, sort of doesn't know itself. It, it can't represent itself. So it, as it were, reaches down into the material world and creates through collective community human activity as, a, as, a, as its kind of vehicle. It creates art forms, collective art forms, and it sees itself, it says, oh, this is what I am. But by the time it, it, it sees that, it actually has already grown, it's already changed, it's already developed. So it's not satisfied with that art form and it moves to the next one. This is how Hegel gives history a kind of telos and a propeller and, 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 a, and a movement forward. And then, and then spirit looks down and says, oh, so this is what I am. But, it's not, but it's, now it's even more refined, it's more developed and it, and it wants to keep moving forward. Now this understanding of history as, as a sort of determinant object and spirit as the subjective structure that, as it were, interprets and learns from that object sends Hegel in two directions. First of all, he defends a form of, of holism um, uh, in, in which the forms of thought and, and art as a form of thought depend on, uh, uh, on on their identity in a network. That is to say that forms of art only take on their characteristics in relation to other forms of art in other times and other epochs in a network. And second, Hegel argues that the conditions of possibility um, um, or, or, or the sort of understanding of, of, of objects includes the participation of individuals in collective social life. In other words, the spirit, it, for Hegel, it is the spirit that is 
propelling art forward, but the spirit needs the participation of individuals in social life to help it make those art objects. And then Hegel constructs three epochs uh, in which spirit learns about itself through art. The first epoch is what he calls the symbolic, which is basically everything prior to ancient Greece. The second epoch is the classical, which is centered in Greece in the fifth century before common era. And the third is the romantic. Now what Hegel means by the romantic is basically art after the Roman Empire or art in the countries of the Romance languages. So what he calls romantic is actually what we would call late medieval and Renaissance as well as 18th century art. So the romantic is a very big period after the Roman Empire that comes up to Hegel's own time. So the romantic art is, the art, is also the art of Hegel's own time. As art moves through these epochs, initially art is very, very close to nature. It, in, initially art deals very much with the earth. And so for Hegel, and this is very important for us of course, architecture is the primary art. Architecture is the inaugural art because architecture is the art that deals most closely with the earth. It's made of stone and brick and, and wood, which are all from the earth. But also arch, uh, architecture is a very bodily art for Hegel. And for Hegel, the, the art moves from the more bodily, the more sensuous, the more material forms. As it moves through time, it becomes less material, it dematerializes itself, and it becomes higher and higher in the conceptual, spiritual realm and starts to move away from the body. Let's see in a little more detail how he constructs this. Hegel starts with the Tower of Babel. And for him, the Tower of Babel, which is of course an architectural art, is important because it's the art of a community. He started with a community effort to build a tower. But of course, the choice of Babel as an exemplary symbol of national unity is difficult because as we know from the legend, the community of Babel started speaking different languages. The tower was never complete. The community dispersed across the globe. For Hegel, it is the very failure of the project that he finds interesting because it's in the failure of the project, it's in the impossibility of the project that then compels the community to continue. Humans didn't stop making art after the failure of Babel. On the contrary, they made art in a way with more intensity. And it, so it gives Hegel the idea of community. It gives him the idea of collective building, but it also gives him the propeller that he needs to move art through time. 